What's going on everyone? Dr. Matt Penku here with another Brains for Brawn episode. One of the most common stretching errors that I see in the gym is that people aren't performing the correct type of stretch. In today's video, we'll talk about common myths related to stretching, three different types of stretches that should be performed in and outside of the gym, and something called the ramp protocol, which will prepare you for any exercise routine. Let's get to it. Something that often goes overlooked in the gym is the importance of stretching. And whether or not you fall into the category of somebody that does or does not stretch, you may not be stretching correctly. One of the most common myths about stretching is that it reduces delayed onset muscle soreness, or that sore feeling you get two to three days after a workout. However, there's plenty of studies that demonstrate that stretching just doesn't really take away that achy feeling you get. The myth that stretching reduces muscle soreness is purely anecdotal and may stem from the fact that when we have sore muscles, we tend to stretch them. And although this may feel good in the moment, the effects are only transient. Another common myth related to stretching is that stretching can prevent injury. It's been well documented in the literature that injury risk related to sports specific movements and weight training is caused by multiple factors. And just because you stretch and increase the range of motion at certain joints doesn't necessarily decrease your risk for injury. Therefore, since stretching is not shown to decrease muscle soreness, nor is it shown to prevent injury, the focus of stretching should shift towards performance with certain exercises. So now that we've debunked some common myths, let's talk about the three most common types of stretching. First up is the static stretch, which is typically what people think about when you talk about stretching. It's a slow, constant hold at the end position of your range of motion, which should be held for 30 to 45 seconds for optimal lengthening. Static stretching should be performed five to 10 minutes after a workout or as a separate session on an off day. A common mistake with static stretching is performing it before you work out. You should actually avoid static stretching before an exercise session, as it leads to decreases in performance. In fact, a 2012 review of 104 articles demonstrated that static stretching before exercise has significant negative acute effects on maximal muscle strength and muscular performance. Next up is dynamic, or function-based stretching as the goal is using specific movements to prepare the body for exercise, also typically referred to as mobility drills, as dynamic stretching places emphasis on movement requirements for sport and exercise, rather than specific muscle groups. Unlike static, dynamic is the preferred method of stretching during a warm-up and should be performed no greater than five to 10 minutes prior to exercise. Multiple studies have demonstrated how dynamic stretching can improve your performance in the gym. One example from a 2005 article in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning demonstrated improvements in leg extension power with dynamic stretching compared to both static stretching and performing no stretch at all. Finally, ballistic stretching, which is a bouncing type movement. And unlike static stretching, the end position is not held. I wouldn't recommend ballistic stretching as it elicits the stretch reflex or a reflexive shortening of the muscle. Also, since ballistic stretching tends to take the joint beyond its available range of motion, it could end up being dangerous if not performed correctly. So when we think about stretching, maybe we should think of a warm up rather than the typical static stretch held at an end position, as a warm-up prepares the body for exercise with subsequent increases in performance. Which leads us into our final topic, the RAMP protocol, which you can think of as a structured warm-up. RAMP stands for raise, activate and mobilize, and potentiate. Raise refers to increasing physiological parameters, such as body temperature, blood flow, oxygen consumption, neural drive, and even psychological preparedness or getting psyched up for the gym. The best way to increase these physiological parameters is to get your heart rate elevated. 
And the most obvious way to do this is using various types of cardio equipment. If I'm going to be doing an upper body day, I'm likely to use the row machine. For legs, you could stick to an elliptical or even the stair climber. An inclined treadmill works well too. If you're in a time crunch in the gym and don't plan on performing the entire ramp protocol before you exercise, don't omit this part. Raising your physiological parameters is probably the most crucial component of the warm up. Activate and mobilize is analogous to the stretching component of the warm up. And as we mentioned earlier, dynamic stretching is the preferred method. The focus of this component should be actively moving your body parts through the full range of motion required for the exercise you're going to perform. Potentiate is analogous to warm-up sets and should flow smoothly into your working sets and subsequent exercise session. In summary, the RAMP protocol takes you from a general warm-up of steady state cardio to elevate the heart rate, through dynamic stretching to activate and mobilize body segments, and finally, specific warm-up sets of the exercise you're going to perform, which should flow smoothly into your working sets. Well guys, that's it. I hope you can apply these principles of stretching to your own routine. And as always, please subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below on anything else that you guys want to learn about. Thanks for watching, everyone.